This week's edition of Church Media Design TV is sponsored by Print Management Solutions. Welcome to another edition of Church Media Design TV Tips, Tricks, and How To for You, the Church Media Designer. I'm your host, Brad Zimmerman, and as you can see, things are a little bit different today. Um, I don't have any bobbleheads, no gimmicks per se, but we are going to be talking about design, giving you some awesome resources, some inspiration, and we're going to be talking about After Effects and some custom shapes that have been masked in the whole nine yards. So. The first thing I wanna talk about is the film festival. Before we move on, I gotta talk about this. Voting began for the film festival just over a week ago. You can head over to churchmediadesign.tv slash um, contest to find links to all of the contestants or you can go to the film festival category on the website and you'll see all of the different pages. Um, there's over 250 videos submitted from over five countries. I think there were six or seven or eight countries around the world. So it was an international festival even, um, and some amazing work from small churches to mega churches and everything in between. Um, we had some awesome entries. We narrowed them down to five, and you'll see those on the website. We've had over th um, just under 3,000 votes already logged, and I really want to encourage you guys to get out there and vote and make your vote uh, count because there's some awesome prizes for these winners. They're going to get you know, pro presenter, they're going to get uh, tons of videos from Igniter, they're going to get uh, Daydox and Prayer Engine and Own the Mix and I don't even know if I'm uh, forgetting any, but uh, oh, Ticket to Echo Conference, so just amazing different prizes and well deserved for some of these people because they did some amazing work and we want to encourage that in the church. So really want to um, push you guys to head over to churchmediadesign.tv slash contest to check that out. The other thing real quick that's been going on on the website is recently I did, uh, last week actually, we did an interview with Barton Damer and this past week as well we actually did a live show with Barton. So um, you can head over to uh, the website and you'll see the live page. Um, for that and we actually have an archive version there so you can uh, check that out as well as head over to his website alreadybenchewed.tv check out that brand new website you can get one of these new sweet uh, t-shirts um, from the from the website there and uh, encourage him and the awesome work that he's doing so um, make sure to check out alreadybenchewed.tv and that live interview it was actually really cool we did like over an hour James White from signalnoise.com st uh, stopped by and we actually did kind of this power uh, two hours where we did our show and then we passed it off to James and he did his hour live show so it's just really cool um, so make sure to check that out as well as make sure to get out and vote make your vote count check out churchmediadesign.tv slash contest and make it count as for me and the well there are no bobbleheads so let's get into the rest of the show Let's reach into the stockpile and grab you guys some great resources. And the first one, well, is from our friend over at SignalNoise.com, James White, an amazing designer and has this really cool retro futurism uh, look where he does a lot of really cool retro rainbows and interesting colors. And he has a pretty uh, staple design that he's been doing over the past year. And he actually did a uh, tutorial on his website on how to create this. Now. It's cool to be able to copy slash create what he's done, but the even cooler part is he pushes you beyond his tutorial. He says, you know, uh, it's one thing to recreate what I've done, but it's another thing to take these ideas and play with them. So throughout the tutorial, he says, hey, once you've done it with these shapes, try these other shapes. Or once you've used this blending mode, try other blending modes. Or once you've used these colors, try different colors. And so he just gives a lot of great tips and ideas. And I just think that's the best part of that article. So I really want you guys to check it out. So head over to signalnoise.com and check that out. Now the next one is from Design Reviver. Now Design Reviver is uh, a great website. It's got tons of resources. And this actually is a listing of uh, new 
patterns and actions and more patterns and resources for for Photoshop so you can check here you can see that there's some great patterns in here as well as you can see there's some really cool actions to do some cool vignette and make your pictures pop as well as you can check out even more resources and stock grunge effects and the whole nine yards so that's some really great stuff over at design reviver uh, i want to encourage you guys to check those out i think they'd be really handy for your everyday needs and the last one is from our friend nick campbell over at grayscale gorilla now nick a lot of times talks about cinema 4d and 3d design and he's been really uh, doing a lot of tutorials for that so if you're trying to learn cinema 4d it's a great place to start but he actually uh, led us on to another person he knows, and I think it's Beeple, or I don't know how to say his name. Anyway, he's giving away um, some of his scenes from Cinema 4D. Now, again, it's not just to steal his stuff and make it look exactly like that person's. It's that you can take that and then put your own uh, 3D objects in there or animations, but use the lighting that's been done that's really well done and be able to make some really great stuff using some scenes that are already set up. So make sure to check out Grayscale Gorilla, Design Reviver, and of course, SignalNoise.com. on let's say thank you to our sponsor of print management solutions.biz if you have print needs well print management solution has your answer slash solution um, it's not a great ad but I kind of enjoy doing it so they're a great company and uh, we have just done a huge print project and it wouldn't be we wouldn't be able to do this project without having their printer and their print solutions um, we get ink as soon as we need it. Um, we don't pay for ink, we just pay per page. Um, so we have this whole contract with them and it's really affordable. So you can either lease or buy a printer and there's tons of great stuff you can do. So check out printmanagementsolutions.biz and down in the lower uh, right hand corner you'll see an email address and a phone number. You can give them a call and they're actually, there's no uh, set way to go through this process. You're actually going to just need to say, hey, here's what we need and they're going to do a customized plan for you and your church. So make sure to check them out. You're going to save a ton of money. So check out printmanagementsolutions.biz. Recently, I've been very intrigued by the idea of shapes inside After Effects. Now, shapes, uh, there's new shape layers as of CS3 uh, on, you know, to current CS5, and you can do so much different stuff with them, and there, it's basically a limitless area. I know all of After Effects is, but this has really intrigued me as the power of these basic geometric shapes and the different things that you can create with them. So uh, we're going to jump inside After Effects, and we're going to create a pretty simple uh, shape animation that you guys can do so much different stuff with and employ in so many different uh, projects. And like James White talked about, I'm going to encourage you guys to mess around and change it and see what you guys can come up with. So let's head inside After Effects. So inside After Effects, we're going to go to Composition, New Composition. We'll just call this our master. And we'll do a widescreen at 30 frames per second. Should be fine. Now I'm going to zoom this back to a quarter. And the first thing I'm going to do is right click in the timeline and I'm going to do new shape layer. Now you also could do layer new uh, shape layer. So we can do that. Now you can see it doesn't really create anything so we need to actually fill it up. Now I could have just taken these tools and drawn something out and it would have made a shape layer. I want to be a little bit more accurate so I'm going to just build this um, from the ground up. So we're going to flip down our properties here and we'll see contents and we'll see that there's nothing there. So we're going to hit add and we're actually going to add a, uh, a rectangle first and uh, we're going to change our size here so we're not going to be um, at 100 by 100 anymore. We're going to scale out the height here and we're going to make it like 600 on the height by you know 100 maybe a little bit less let's go to like I don't know, 80 something 79 very accurate okay so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a fill so we can actually see this so now we have a fill in there and it's red i mean we could change the color if we want to to like let's say white so now we have a basic shape here so now we're going to go and we're going to add a repeater. Now this is something that's really cool. It automatically repeats your objects and you can do some interesting things with it. So we're going to repeat this um, eight times and actually let's do like five times. 
And then we're, let's, we're gonna space this out a little bit. So we're gonna take our position and we're just gonna space out our position a bit. So now you can see we have, you know, an uh, interesting block here of, of shapes. And what I wanna do is I wanna actually make these rectangles uh, mask out a circle. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna add in an ellipse. So we'll add this ellipse in here, but you can see that it's um, inside this repeater. It's, uh, so we need to bring it outside the repeater so there's only one of it. And then we're gonna scale this up so that it is uh, our just a little under 600. And next we're going to actually do one other thing. And we actually need to use a merge paths. And so we're gonna take this merge paths and we're gonna put it um, before our ellipse. And it's gonna merge everything before, and we're just gonna say merge. So now all of these individual rectangles have been merged into one singular object that After Effects sees. So now we can add one more merge paths, and we're gonna bring this one, we're gonna put it below our ellipse, and we're gonna remove uh, this stroke and fill that it automatically made, and well, we'll actually keep this fill. Let's just make this red for right now. And this merge pass, we're gonna set to, instead of add, we're gonna do exclude intersections. Um, maybe not, we'll do intersect, there we go, intersect. So now we can, we're only seeing where these things intersect. So now if we take this rectangle, and we take our position of our rectangle, and just move it over, you can see that we get uh, interesting little masked animation here. So this is pretty uh, easy to do. So now we can uh, take and we can make, uh, so let's set this to negative 907. And I'm gonna do Command and Shift, uh, or Control and Shift on the PC. And we're gonna hit right, and that's gonna send us 10. And then let's do 20 frames. And then let's uh, set a keyframe for um, it going all the way through. Maybe we want to move this down just a little bit more. So I'm going to zoom in on my timeline here a little bit. Let's bring this down to just over a second. And then we're going to hit N on our keyboard to set our work area bar. And then we're going to go up to, uh, to Window and let's do Controls, um, Time Controls, and we'll do Play Every Other Frame. So you can see we get this nice um, crazy red stuff going across. Now it's a little fast. Um, let's do, let's not skip any frames. Let's show every frame. So that's every frame rendered. Let's, uh, let's make this a little bit longer. And so now we can see it goes a little bit slower. And then the cool thing is we can actually go in here and we can do the transform and we can actually rotate this. So let's just rotate just a little bit. And now if we watch this back, you'll see we have like a crazy, you know, sideways deal going across. And then we can do different colors, we can do different timing, all that sort of thing. And the best part is we can actually take the contents and the transform, and we're just gonna um, select both of those, and we're gonna go to animation, and we're gonna say save animation preset. And we're just gonna call this circle lines, hit save, and that'll save an animation preset. So now I can go to window, effects, and presets, and we can go over here and we can say circle, and you'll see that we have our circle lines, and we can uh, just drop that in, and it automatically will make a new layer with that effect on it, um, doing the exact same animation. So now we could, you know, maybe offset this one, and uh, change the scale of it so it's a little smaller. Oops, that's the scale, S for scale, there we go. And let's move it over and let's duplicate that. So Command or Control D, we'll move that over here and offset that one a little bit. And then we'll pull up the color. So let's actually just do the color a little bit easier. So we're gonna go to Effects, right click, and we're gonna do Generate uh, Fill and we'll just say our fill color is going to be uh, blue, blue color here. And then here we got our generate fill, and we'll do maybe a 
different a purpley color and now if we do a little preview of our timeline so let's just preview up our timeline here and you'll see we get some crazy stuff going on so we got those two let's uh, actually add in this third here of and let's make this a different color so we'll again effects fill let's make this one something a little bit more normal there we go something in that range and now let's take a preview to this and we can see our final animation so we got some crazy different shapes going on and you could do so much with this so i encourage you guys to play around try different things and make sure to save those presets so your work can go a little faster for you next time This week's inspiration is a very interesting one. Uh, there's been a huge battle going on between Apple and Adobe about Flash. And Apple's big thing is we're all about HTML5. And some of you are like, what is HTML5 and why does Apple care about it so much? I really think it comes down to money, but this is all about inspiration. And Apple actually put together a pretty inspiring uh, gallery of amazing HTML5 websites. So you can head over to apple.com slash HTML5 and find this gallery. I'm not going to talk you through a bunch of websites. I'll just let you go explore. So um, check it out. And again, they're just flame wars. It's like Mac versus PC and every other battle, Burger King versus McDonald's and Adidas versus Reebok versus Nike. Like, There's a million reasons why each one is the correct one and you guys might get all hot in your seats right now, but we don't want to talk about that. Let's just be inspired by some great websites and great designs. So head over to apple.com slash HTML5. tuning into another edition of Church Media Design TV. I want to encourage you guys yet again to head over to the website and vote in the contest. You can go to churchmediadesign.tv slash contest and do that there as well as you guys can find out all sorts of great articles and inspiration and freebies. There's a ton of stuff that goes on in the website that doesn't happen just here on the show. There's so much more than just this. Uh, on the website so you guys can check all of that out there um, so you can check out all those other links and all the stuff in the show notes for this episode um, so make sure to check that stuff out if you guys want to send me any questions or comments you can do that on email brad at churchmediadesign.tv uh, facebook.com slash bradley.zimmerman or slash cmdtv it's our fan page you can find me on twitter.com slash cmdtv and uh, those are the best ways to get in touch with me. So you guys can do that. And again, I guess it's just me today. So we'll see you later.